Okay, so more multiplication properties of exponents, and this one specifically is going to be power of a power. So in other words, when you raise something that already has a power to another power, you can take those two powers and multiply them. Okay, or if you are doing power of a product, in other words, you have two things being multiplied in here, and they could have powers as well, so you could actually combine these two. You just raise everything to that same power. So I like to call this one the distribution one. Okay, so it's like these have ones, and this is the distributive property of exponents. You just multiply each one of these powers by this power out here. Okay, so let's see some action for it. Uh, then we will actually talk about some scientific notation and some multiplication powers for their for their uh, exponents that you can actually see some really cool shortcuts. Okay, so n to the five, n to the fifth to the second power just becomes n to the tenth because we can multiply the five and the two. Okay, now what if we had c to the negative fourth to the fifth? You still multiply, except now we're going to have a negative exponent. So it's going to be to the negative twentieth, which just becomes one divided by c to the twentieth. Okay, so that one's pretty simple. You just do the reciprocal of it, just like what we've been doing this entire time. Now, what if they're both negative? Do you still multiply them? Heck yeah, because it makes it positive. So this becomes a to the twelfth, and we don't have to reciprocate anything. Now, what about numbers? Do you have to simplify them? Yes. So 2 to the 3rd to the 4th becomes 2 to the 12th. Okay, and that number, if you check on your graphing calculator or your calculator, 2 to the 12th is a really large number. It's going to be uh, 4096, which if we switch it to our pretty simple standard notate or our scientific notation, it's going to be 4.096 times 10 to the 3rd. Okay? All right. Now, what if you have a number in there and then you have an exponent on the outside? Yes, you still distribute the exponent to the 3 and multiply that, okay? Now, what about the number that doesn't have an exponent? Well, if you remember, in a previous lesson we've talked about bringing a 1 and putting it on that number without the exponent because technically every single number that exists actually has a 1 exponent on it if it's just written without an exponent. So not only am I multiplying the 3 by the 3, but I'm almost also multiplying the 1 by the 3. Okay, so this becomes 5 to the 3rd, uh, then x to the 9th. And yes, you do have to simplify that, so it's going to be 125 uh, x to the 9th. Okay, now each one of these you are going to simplify first, and then you can multiply and add like terms, okay? Okay, so once again, Put the 1 on the numbers, the 1 exponent on the numbers, before you start so that you remember that there's an exponent there too. So this becomes 12 squared uh, a to the fourth, okay, something simple. And then this one becomes 3 to the negative third, and then y to the negative third, okay. Now. If you put these over ones, okay, if you remember when we were dealing with negative exponents, I put them over ones and then I move the ones with negative exponents to their lower parts. Okay, so I'm going to move this entire thing down to the denominator. Okay, so now what do I have? I have 12 squared, which is 144, a to the fourth. Okay, so that one's pretty simple. But then, I have underneath, I have 3 cubed, which is going to become 27, and then that's going to be y to the third. Okay. All right. And then, when you're dealing with stuff like this, you're probably asking yourself, do I have to reduce this? Well, 144 divided by 9, yes, you are because they're both divisible by 9 you have to reduce by 9 so this becomes 16 and then this becomes 9 well this becomes 3 jeez a wheeze I'm skipping all my math skills so that just becomes a simple 3 so this actually becomes uh, 16 a to the fourth on the top over
three y cubed. Okay, and you really couldn't simplify until you got down to the problem just being a fraction in front. Okay, All right. But that's everything written out right there. It's, now we're going to talk about scientific notation, and we're going to talk about multiplying and then raising to a power because there's some really cool rules I can have. Okay, so when you're multiplying two scientific notations together, what you're going to do is you're going to literally multiply the numbers in front together. So you're going to go 2.5 times 3.7 and I get 9.25 and that's going to be my first number and that's the beautiful thing about it. 9.25, it's as simple as that. Times 10, okay, now, with the exponents, however, you have to pay attention to the fact that they both have tens, so they have the same base, so I'm allowed to add the exponents. And so this just becomes 10 to the ninth. Okay? Something simple as that. Now, on this one right here, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be raising not only 4 to the 8, not only 10 to the 4th to the 8th power, but you're going to be raising this 4 to the same power because you're going to be distributing the 8th exponent. It's the same rule as what we did up here with the power of a power rule. So this becomes 4 to the 8th times 10 to the eight, 10, 10 to the 32nd. There we go. Okay. And if we do our calculation real fast, 4 to the 8th, this number becomes 65536 times 10 to the 32nd. Okay, so if you remember, scientific notation can't be like this, so we need to move the exponent, so, or the decimal, one, two, three, four, four spots, so we add four to the 32, so this becomes 6.5536 uh, times 10 to the 36, okay? And voila, you have all your rules for multiplication uh, in working with this stuff, okay? Now, please, don't get these uh, rules confused with addition, because addition doesn't have, well, it does have parentheses, but it's not raising to a power. So you have to make sure you understand the differences. Make sure you practice, practice, practice your rules, okay? All right, and that's it for more multiplication properties of exponents. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.